Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part seven of my Iron Man Hulkbuster build. So in the previous parts, I built a plywood frame, which um, you can walk around in. And that frame allows all the joints to be locked so that I can climb out of the frame, lock all the joints and leave it standing there. It's pretty flexible. I've got an interesting bungee arrangement that attaches the thighs to the upper torso. In the last part, I made a mock-up of some of the cardboard shells. So basically, we made some temporary shells to see what the suit's going to look like and get a feel for the sizes. I haven't built the frame for the arms yet, and part of the reason for building cardboard ones was to try and get the sizing so I can work out the mechanics. So I've decided that what I'm going to do is start working on the hand and then work my way up the arm, sorting out the mechanics as I go. And the reason for that is there's quite a lot of mechanics in the hand and the lower arm. Um, because they're operated remotely by joystick by my human arm and hand in the upper arm. So we need to make sure there's space for basically a motor to operate the hand, possibly wrist rotation. I'd also like to have weapons that pop out of a, uh, the panel on the lower arm. And then of course we need to sort out the elbow joint. So my hands are going to be mechatronic, which means I need to put motors in them so they can be activated. I've got a pair of these joysticks, which are the old clicky joysticks. Um, with a nine-way plug-on, which is the sort of thing you'd have on an Amiga 500 or an Atari ST in the olden days. So those have just got switches in, uh, which I can switch the various functions. So I was going to have left and right for wrist rotation, uh, backwards and forwards for elbow bending, and one of the fire buttons for gripping, and the other one for operating weapons, potentially. Doesn't mean I can't have other switches as long as I can operate them with one hand. So I'm going to be using these cordless screwdrivers to activate the functions. Um, these are really cheap ones. I bought a few of them a while ago. These are about £4 in British money um, from Wilkinson's in the UK. They're actually made by Draper Tools, as far as I can um, see from the person's postcode that manufactured them on there. Um, so these are dead now. They've actually got rechargeable batteries in. They're fixed speed, but they've got quite high torque. So inside those... You get the following, a set of rechargeable batteries, they're just NICADs, the charging circuit and all that stuff, and the switch, which we don't really need. Um, and then there's basically a nice motor in there, which is a planetary gearbox, which means that um, the gears are stacked lengthways, and there's three small gears with one in the middle in stages that makes the gear reduction, and also gives quite a lot of torque, obviously being an electric screwdriver. So we're going to use the motors out of these. These are going to be need to be mounted quite carefully, because once you take them out, um, they will just fall to pieces. So we either need the end of the electric screwdriver to hold them together, and we need to cut down the plastic, or we need to make a 3D printed assembly to hold them. Effectively, that's going to pull a winch, which will, um, in this case, close the hand and open it, so it's going to open and close all the fingers at once. So that's going to have a push and pull rod, which I'm going to make out of this material. This is actually 3D printing filament from 3D filler print in the UK, and this is Tolman nylon. So typically if you get ABS or PLA filament, it's quite easy to snap if you try. Um, this is nylon, which isn't easy to snap. In fact, it's practically impossible to snap, even if I bend it really tight. Um, it's still in one piece. So that's going to operate as a push and pull rod um, that goes down the fingers to close them. And there's going to be probably a return spring that pushes it out. And that whole thing will be driven by effectively a pulley or a winch on the electric motor. I need to get the materials as light as possible to make the fingers and all of this because otherwise it's going to get too heavy to walk along in due to its physical size. So the fingers themselves, the core of them is going to be made of foam packing material. I've got two of these pieces, they're actually the packing that my um, Lulzbot Taz printer came in. So I'm going to be cutting these off, each one's got four and I've got um, some extra material to make the thumbs. So obviously, I think the fingers are going to be about this long, but obviously these will be cut up and articulated um, into at least three sections and then hinged to the back of the hand. And then along the inside of the finger will run the nylon push and pull rod and we'll have um, possibly a return spring or we'll just push the rod back out to bring the hand out again. Obviously there'll be far more to it with some 3D printed parts and some other sheet material to make the guard on the back of the fingers. So I've made this rather crude looking foam hand and I've cut the wedges out of each finger so that they're flexible and it can bend. And I've got a, a rather crude looking block there to attach the thumb onto. Um, obviously we've got four fingers and one thumb. I've also made a pair of these. 
Um, it does look rather a lot like I've just glued foam together because I have. But behind the piece there, we can see the first set of Greeblies. So let's just zoom in on those. So these are all 3D printed. You'll notice there's 10 sets there. Um, and these are pieces for the inner mechanical layer. So all over those, uh, all over those foam hands, I'm going to be sticking these 3D printed parts. And these are going to be painted up in plastic primer and Ford Rosso Red. Um, the previous Iron Man suit was painted in Ford Jupiter Red Metallic, but that paint is discontinued because it was from a 1979 Ford Fiesta. Um, so no one makes the paint anymore. So I'm using this one, which is still manufactured. Um, so I'm going to paint all of those up and stick them on. Um, there's also some more pieces printing. You can probably hear in the background as we speak. So the aim is to completely cover the foam with all of these greeblies. So this is just the inner layer, then there'll be some other pieces which fit on where those nut shapes are. So um, let me put it together and get the other pieces printed and then you can have a clearer idea of what I'm talking about. So I've painted those parts red with the paint and they look, look not too bad, they look like quite good mechanical parts because of the 3D print lines. So it's almost like they're ready weathered, you can see some shadows and things on them. Although as I mentioned those are going to be almost covered up eventually. The next set of parts I've printed are these, which are these interesting triangular pieces. They've got quite a big hole through the middle. And these are the pieces that the filament is going to be threaded through so that it pulls all the way down the fingers and those are going to be stuck in the bottom of the fingers upside down. So I need to cut a V-shape out of the foam and stick those in that way up. So I've got one hand there. I've um, attached those first 3D printed parts and painted them red, of course, and put some conduit in between them. So now they look quite industrial. Um, the pieces I just showed you I've painted black and put along the inside of the finger so that the nylon 3D printer filament runs in there and that can be used to activate the fingers and of course the conduit bends on the back of the hand as I mentioned there's still quite a lot more details to add but I've done the entire hand there so if we pull any of these we can pull the fingers or or push them so we can open and close the hand and I've got all of those bits on there. I've still got some pieces for the hand back and the edge of the fingers and I still need to attach this thumb on. So let's get some more pieces printed and painted and stick them on. So several days later, here's the next batch of 3D printed parts. Um, I've got these grippy parts, which are finger grips for each individual digit of the inside of the hand. And I've also got these sections which run down the side of the fingers, which um, are supposed to look like hinges. So I've got some other pieces I've printed and already stuck on, which are basically these hand back pieces with conduit holders. So I've got my hand stuck together now and I've got the thumb mounted. And of course, when you uh, pull the filament, I can bend the fingers. So let's get those other parts stuck on and then we'll see where we are. So here are my hands of all the parts stuck on now. So on the other side, we've got all of those sections. I need to do something about the palm there, which needs to cover these channels but I need to work out how that fits with the next piece, basically with the forearm. Obviously my uh, strings pull all the joints shut, so all of those are gonna be activated at once, of course. So the side panels I've only put onto the side of the fingers there. Um, you're never gonna see that one because all the whole hand will close at once. So um, they seem to work quite well. I've been experimenting with putting some wedges in, so um, it holds the thumb in a more natural position. Or at least that was the idea. Um, until those get pulled shut, so I'll have to see how that works out. I think in normal walking mode, to stop them wobbling around, they're going to be pulled quite tight, which holds them in place. So there we go. Um, I'm going to be building a hand plate next and the forearm, so that's going to be covering the back of this. So let's just stick that in for size there. Obviously the hands are going to be superbly oversized, as well as the arms. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how, how they are at the moment. Um, obviously the hand plate is going to be covering the back of the hands there, but I still have some more details to do. So I have some pieces which are going to fit onto these nut shape pieces. So I have a finger tip cover which is going to be on there, and there's going to be multiple guards that sort of mesh with the hand plate. So I'm going to be doing those next time, as well as the other various missing pieces, so I can see how this hand integrates with the rest of the arm. So that's all I've got for this time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on this project and other projects. Check out my social media pages and also my Patreon crowdfunding campaign where you can get access to an exclusive live broadcast with me as well as other rewards.